Hello, and welcome to another episode of the SIRS Group Podcast. I'm Barbara. And I'm JC. And today we are talking about pets and SIRS. Yes. So I think a lot of us who have SIRS have this understanding that the people around us are involved, right? Like our family members through the genetics, like maybe our parents, maybe our siblings also present with signs of SIRS. But then a lot of us also have this experience of we live with our pets. And um, some of us experience pets that are unwell. And some of us wonder about the health of pets in our homes when we have SIRS. So we kind of just wanted to take an episode to discuss SIRS and pets in general. There's not a ton of information out there. We're going to lead with that. Um, We're going to talk about what we did find and what we're kind of interested in. And then hopefully over time, as SIRS awareness grows, we'll get more and more information about this as well. Yes. Um, Just as a personal note, I have been to, I currently live in Las Vegas. I've been to no less than five or six vets in my area uh, here. And then I've also been to at least four back in Southern California when I lived there. Um, to help my dog, Rosie, who has uh, just kind of chronic ear infections, chronic skin infections, GI issues. I have actually solved quite a few of her issues with not only carnivore, but specifically lion diet. She's on a beef only, a raw beef diet, Um, but she still gets flare-ups of these skin issues and ear issues, and vets generally cannot explain it. They manage it, They give her medications to suppress her immune system usually, um, and antibiotics, uh, antifungals, you name it, she's had it done. Um, And so I have a very specific interest in this topic because I watch her suffer, obviously, every time the flare-ups happen, and uh, and a lot of her issues seem to point directly to SIRS. And yes, dogs can get SIRS which is kind of crazy, but it's true. The only other animal I've heard any of the SIRS practitioners refer to as having SIRS are horses. And I found that very interesting. It's um, in Andrew Heyman uh, YouTube webinar conference where he was talking and he just mentions offhandedly that horses also get SIRS. And it sparked something in my mind because when I was dealing with my autoimmune issues, one of the symptoms I had was uveitis, it's inflammation of the inner eye. And it turns out horses get them, get uveitis like all the time. Like it's just systemic in horses. It's really dangerous because it can actually blind the horses over time. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking into like the supplements they're giving horses to get rid of uveitis because I wanted to get rid of mine. Um, But it's so interesting that there appears to be some awareness there from the SERS practitioners, but Obviously, they're not veterinarians and they're doing really great work helping humans. Um, But I know personally, we would both really like to see personally, but I'm going to speak for both of us. (laughs) We would really like to see some of that information be shared because it would be helpful if we knew if and how we could potentially help our pets. And I think this is a really good transition into talking about the really interesting information you found about staff. Yeah. And specifically the thing that that surge practitioners are usually focused on and will help you with with your dog um in this case is staff specifically or marcons which is um antibiotic resistant staff basically so there is a study that was done in 2007 um on 830 dogs and 736 owners um There were a few interesting takeaways from that study that I, of course, dug into because I thought, oh, staff and dogs, this must be SERS related in some capacity, which I think it kind of was. So first of all, they did test, I want to say about 30 dogs that were just stray dogs. And the way they got them was there's some humane society that would go and grab stray dogs to spay or neuter them. So while they were they had them in their care, they were able to do a nasal swab um, and also a skin culture to test for staph. None of the stray dogs had staph. Wow. That was fascinating because obviously they have less human contact. And it's sad because now it seems that humans are actually giving it to their dogs rather than the other way around. Not to say the dog doesn't then give it back to the human. And that's why SIRS practitioners are 
uh, do have some concern about dogs in the house um, when they're treating a a patient for SIRS. Um, and just be- to note there, the reason why that's important is because clearing Marcons, most SIRS people have Marcons. And so clearing Marcons is one of the early steps in the Shoemaker Protocol. And the Shoemaker Protocol is the clinically proven path to healing from SIRS. Thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect point. Um, A couple other takeaways from the study is that dogs that were female and also dogs that had more access to the bedroom tended to have a higher instance of having staph uh, colonized in their nose or, or on their skin. So that makes sense in regards to actinos. Um, That's where, uh, well, not the dogs being female, that part, no one can explain why the female dogs are more likely to have staph uh, or or marcons. But um, when the dogs have access to your bedroom, that's probably the biggest place that we as humans shed actinos from ourselves. It's going to be on the bed, on the mattress, on the the bedding, all that stuff. You're just around in the room. So if your dog is sleeping in your bedroom with you, it's a higher chance that your dog can get staff from you, basically, seems like. And just a note on actinos, actinos or actinomyces are the bacteria that are attracted to mold. Um, So it's part of the chemical soup that is present in a water damaged building. Typically people will do like an Ermi Hertz me to test for mold. They'll do an endotoxin score to test for those biotoxins. And then they'll do an actinos test um, in order to see if actinos are in your environment. This is actually a hot topic right now in SIRS. They're finding more and more through the Genie, which is the genetic test that helps you understand which biotoxin you might be reacting to. Um, more and more people are presenting as reacting to actinos. The cool thing about actinos is they're cleanable because they are some, it's shed skin. So it's something you can remove from your environment. Thank you for that context. Beautifully. I feel like I'm like the tool tip in this episode. No, (laughs) you're right. You really are. The paper clip. Are you trying to write a resume? (laughs) So great. Um, One final thing from that study is that of the humans that they tested, remember they tested uh, 736 owners of these dogs, 25% of them had staff. Hmm. Isn't that a familiar percentage of 25% of the population is has the genetics for SIRS or chronic inflammatory response syndrome. So obviously they were not testing for SIRS, but they were testing for staff. Uh, And so I thought that was a fascinating little moment of, oh, like no one's actually tying the two together in the study, but you know, I'm, I'm putting it together in my brain uh, for what that's worth. So, so yeah, that's, um, that's the extent of my research as far as uh, and and maybe research in general um, on dogs and SIRS. I know that there is also a study out there of dogs being given cholestyramine, and that does help uh, dogs with GI issues in the same way it helps humans. Um, of course, there's no... Um, you're probably not going to find a vet that knows how to administer that. And that's where it sucks. And you're either on your own, or you might be able to talk with some other people in the community, or maybe even some SERS doctors that have treated, kind of risked things to treat their own dogs however they could. And they probably have stories of how they did it. Um, But that is, that is something that uh, I am looking at and trying to figure out for myself. So of course, as I learn more, and hopefully watch my dog heal, uh, I will certainly share whatever I learn. Yeah, I think it's it's such a catch-22 because it's SIRS is so new. You know, it was just discovered in the 90s. And so they they really are focused on treating the people. But the, the fact that we inoculate our dogs and they re-inoculate us is like, okay, well, maybe we do need some veterinary intervention at this point. Right. And the last point we kind of wanted to talk about is circling back to actinos. Um, So actinos can grow on human skin, but it can also grow on animal skin. And additionally, your your pets, you know, especially with dogs where they're coming in and out of the house all the time, they can bring actinos and endotoxins into your home. And so I'm not saying that it's impossible to live with pets and have SIRS. I would say most of the people in the SIRS group have pets. Um, But 
it is choosing to live on hard mode. And this is a concept we talk about quite a bit, you know, like, where do you live? Is it a humid environment that's going to be harder for you to manage your SIRS? Um, Do you have a lot of possessions that's going to be harder for you to manage Actinos? And this is just another one of those things where this is choosing to live on hard mode. I would argue it's the best to hard mode ever. His dogs are the best. But it is a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that choice can include um, cleaning their feet every time they walk somewhere where you think they've picked up endotoxins, a dog park or a park where lots of dogs are or dog poop is all that fun stuff, um, you know, bathing them regularly, uh, brushing them outside uh, and and getting them groomed professionally. There's a lot of different directions you can go um, to try to protect yourself not letting them on the bed or in the bedroom. I don't know if I'm ready to go that far, but that's another option. I know some, quite a few people do, uh, you know, they don't let their dogs in the bedroom um, or they, um, please don't keep your dogs outside. I mean, that's not, especially if you live in like, I don't know, at least half of the friggin' world, it's not cool to leave your dog outside. Uh, literally, it's too hot. But um, hey. <laughs> dog but, <yeah>. abuse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making jokes about dog abuse. It's fun. <laughs> um, yeah, just I think there's just little choices that you can make, um, you know, to keep things as clean as possible. Um, it's just we all just got to do our best. But man, I love my dogs more than anything. And they are used to coming into the bedroom. So I don't know that I will be changing that behavior. But that's that's for me to figure out. <laughs> if you are interested in more resources and support on your SIRS journey, if you want to follow along Barbara's journey of treating Miss Rosie Cotton, um, you can join us over at thesirsgroup.com. If you want to like, comment, subscribe on this podcast, we truly appreciate it. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Yep. See you then. <laughs>